Hey guys, I hope everyone's doing okay. So this is the carbohydrate metabolism lecture, and this will be composed of different videos. Okay, so I'll be dividing the per topic. All right. So for the intended learning objective, you are expected to explain the different reactions that constitute the glycolytic pathway and the enzymes that catalyze them, as well as the substrates and cofactors and the products, of course. And you are also expected to describe the fates of pyruvate under different conditions, describe the pathways that brings carbon into glycolysis from other hexoses. So these are your feeder pathways or polysaccharides, which is your glycogen metabolism. And also discuss the general principles applied in glycolysis. So this will be regulation and other stuff. Okay, so for the entire carbohydrate metabolism, so we will be covering glycolysis as well as gluconeogenesis, states of pyruvate, feeder pathways, regulation of carbohydrate catabolism, secondary pathways of glucose oxidation. We also have your glycogen metabolism, both catabolism and anabolism and your pentose phosphate pathway. Okay, so, so glycolysis is also called the mden -Mayerhof, mayerhof pathway, named from the two scientists who, the, who were able to discover this pathway. And it means sweet splitting with your Greek word glycis and lysis. So anyway, I'm not reading to the derivation of the word, okay, but then you need to remember the M. Denmeyerhoff pathway. Okay, so this is the summary of your glycolysis. So you start with six carbon molecule and you need two ATPs for start off. So it's like a business long you need capital. And then two NAD plus. So this is your low energy stores. Okay, and then after glycolysis, so this is a 10 step pathway. Okay, you'll be able to get two molecules of pyruvate. So that's three carbons each. So in essence, na split lang yung glucose mo. And you get four ATPs okay, after all the reactions and two NADH. So in short, you'll be generating two ATPs and two NADH okay, from this reaction plus your two pyruvate. Okay, so what are the themes in your glycolysis? So first off, it's sequential. Okay, so each of the individual steps will not make sense kung mag-isa lang sila. They need to be put together para meron kong big picture. So it's like meron kong bracelet. No? It doesn't make sense meron ko lang beads. You need to put them together and then tie them with a string so that you can make something out of it. Okay, so same with glycolysis. If kukunin mo lang yung step 7, then you will not get anything from it. Okay, so it doesn't make sense. They have to be put together in specific sequences okay, um, to get the energy that you need or the byproduct that you need. Okay, so they are composed of simple enzymatic reactions. So, you know, biological systems, um, it's a different condition compared to the physical systems and they're almost always catalyzed, okay? Because the enzymes will provide you an environment that makes the reaction possible, okay? Without too much heat or too much energy expenditure, okay? And it's, it's composed of the investment phase and the payoff phase. So again, it's like business, you need the capital, and then after all the sequence of steps, then you get to harvest energy from it and that. Okay, so the importance of the glycolytic pathway, okay, so you can just read this. So again, it's the only pathway that is taking place in all cells of the body. Um, for some cells, this is the only source of energy, like your red blood cells, and they, they have very limited organelles. The renal medulla, of your kidney, the brain, and sperm. Okay, so... Also, in um, strenuous exercise, okay, where your muscle lacks energy or you don't have sufficient oxygen, okay, but you need your muscles to work, so it can utilize your glycolytic pathway. Kahit na deprived ka ng oxygen during that time. Because you need to survive. Okay, so example yun pag mga sprint and um, mga extremely aerobic exercise or maging an anaerobic yung exercise to, the, to a certain point. Okay, um, the may be considered also as a preliminary step before complete oxidation. So that's where you will get much more energy okay, when you undergo oxidative phosphorylation and citric acid cycle. Okay, it's also a pathway that provides carbon skeletons for synthesis ng amino acids, okay, as well as yung glycerol part ng fat. And later on, you will see that 
um, you can also get the backbone and DNA from the cell. Okay. And most of the reactions are reversible. Okay. Take note of the irreversible reactions because those are the regulated steps. Okay. Para yung pathway mo, hindi siya babalik-balik lang or else in the same energy that you're building up at the same time, you're breaking down. Okay. So it has to be regulated at some areas. And those are the um, irreversible steps. Okay, para you need much energy to go back to it. Okay, so again, it's composed of two phases. For some, they say it's three stages. No, you have your investment, you have your payoff. That's for two phases. But for some, they actually discuss it. Na energy investment, and then the middle where you have your photos one six bisphosphate. You have the cleavage part, and then the payoff phase. So whether you use the two phase or three stages, it doesn't matter as long as you know what's happening in glycolysis okay so this is the summary okay of your glycolytic pathway so you start off with your glucose okay converting it to glucose 6 phosphate using your enzyme hexokinase so glucose is outside the cell and once it gets inside hexokinase will tag it with phosphate again okay that is the priming step or committed step na siya. whatever happens it's gonna stay inside the cell Okay, not unless you have an enzyme that can reverse this. Okay, but for some, like the muscles, they don't have. So stuck kana inside the cell. Whether it breaks down kita to get energy from it, or it store kita as glycogen. Okay, or synthesis of another molecule. So this is the first regulated step. So again, the body, it cannot go out. And then the second step is you have your um, isomerization. You get fructose six phosphate from your glucose six phosphate. So this is from aldehyde to ketone lung. Okay, and then the third step, this is the second regulatory step, is the um, making of your fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So this is another phosphorylation. So step one, regulatory step, that's also the first investment. The third step, that's the second regulatory step. Okay, nag-add ka ulit ng phosphate, dun naman sa other end. Okay, so that's your second investment. Okay, as you can see, no, you cannot add dun sa carbonyl na phosphate. That's why nag isomerase into fructose so that you can add your phosphate group on the alcohol molecule on the um, carbon one. Okay, so that's how nice and how brilliant it is. And then once you have that six carbon molecule with two phosphates, both ends, you can now split it into half. Matig three carbon molecule with tig isang phosphate. Okay, so from there you will get Ang problem mo lang dito, no? it's not symmetrical. Okay, one will have keto group, the other one will have hydroxyl groups. So, if you will cut it into half, as you can see, there are green and blue carbons. So, the green carbons will give you dihydroxyacetone phosphate or DHAP. Okay, and the lower part, carbons three, uh, 4, 5, and 6 will give you glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Okay, but the end point again is using this cleavage step, you get to produce two. Um, molecules with three carbon each and meron silang parehas ng phosphate group. Okay, now here's the problem. Yung succeeding steps will only utilize glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So, sayang naman yung DHAP na na-produce mo. Okay, so the um, pathway also has an enzyme that can isomerize this keto into an aldehyde group. Okay, so from DHAP, magiging G3P siya using your triose phosphate isomerase. So now, Pagpasok mo na yung step 6, you have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate already. So, from then on, similar na yung steps na dadaan na dadaan. Okay, so nagiging times to lang lahat. Okay, now, here comes your payoff phase. Okay, so before you get there, the three carbon molecule na may isang phosphate group will then be phosphorylated again using your, this time it's not ADP, but it's inorganic, inorganic phosphate. Okay, so here you have produced now your 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. And this molecule, you can see, it's all my extreme ng repulsion because those are highly electronegative atoms all around it. So imagine nyo mo, sobrang likot na molecule, yung stable na molecule, sobrang bilis mo yun mabreak. Diba? Parang yung babasagyan mo. Anytime na malaglag mo siya, sobrang mababasa agad siya compared to plastics, right? So, parang ganito yung molecule mo. So, there's so much energy stored to it na isang click mo lang. Pag na-break yun, you get energy from it. 
Okay? So that's what's gonna happen. So there's so much potential energy from it. Okay? And easier na siya mag-break. So downhill na yung energy nito. You get more stable molecules na once you remove those phosphate groups. Okay? So for step 7, you have your enzyme here, phosphoglycerate kinase. Okay? So it's the first removal of the phosphate group. Okay? And then you're going to produce the first ATP that you need. But because you have two glycerol dihydrate phosphate, then you produce two ADPs. Okay? And then, step eight, interconversion lang, three phosphoglycerate, magiging two phosphoglycerate. But this is, this is not just a simple na dilipat nila on the second carbon. Okay? So later, as we can see what's happening inside the enzyme, you'll see that this is actually another phosphate. But then, that's, that's what's happening. Okay? And then, step nine, using your enolase, this is just obviously a dehydration reaction. Okay, and then you produce your phosphoenol pyruvate. Now step 10, step 10, the last step, this is another regulatory step, another irreversible step. Okay, you have your pyruvate kinase, removal ng phosphate, you produce your ADP, and then your end product pyruvate. Okay, now if you will look at all your regulated steps, sa gluconeogenesis, hindi yan pwedeng babalik agad. So all of those steps will be bypassed. You need another enzyme, okay, to convert pyruvate back to phosphoenol pyruvate to convert fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. You need another enzyme to convert glucose 6-phosphate to glucose. So that's the beauty of it, okay? So iba -iba, tapos meron siyang iba-ibang regulation. Okay, so again, this is your two phases of glycolysis. Um, I suggest that you write your own reactions because you will remember what's happening in the molecule. We are um, not here to memorize everything, okay? although you will need that for the words okay? so that you will feel more confident. Um, but when you write it down, you know, as chemists, no, you know what's happening with the bonds. So na pupunta yung phosphate, sa na pupunta yung carbon, na pupunta yung carbon, na double bond. So you'll appreciate it more. You don't have to be so good at organic chemistry for you to appreciate this. No? But then as chemists, um, that's what I will encourage you. Don't memorize the names. You memorize, know the structures, and then you will know the name. Of course, no, you're a chemist. And then, ano yung mga necessary requirements? Okay, bakit yung Step 6, nagkaroon siya ng NADH. Ano nangyari din sa molecule from step um, molecule 5 to molecule 6, right? So, yeah. Something like that. So, again, the prefer, uh, preparatory phase, we even discussed this kanina. So, again, just recap it. So, nandito yung first priming and second priming reaction or first regulated and second regulated reaction. And that's also the first investment and second investment. Do na punta yung two ATPs. Okay, and at the end of the preparatory phase, you have the cleavage reaction where you get to produce na yung dalawang tig-3 carbon molecule may phosphate. Okay, so for each of the steps, I'll highlight lang things that you need to remember, like the cofactor, okay, and why. So for the first step, which is the phosphorylation, again, this is a committed step. Once it's phosphorylated, it cannot go out of the cell unless it's the liver. Because they have the enzyme that can interconvert it. All right. So for hexokinase, you need your magnesium to phosphorylate that. Okay. So why? Okay. I'll show you here. So it somehow stabilizes the phosphate groups. Okay. Para pag transfer nandun sa um, glucose molecule. Okay. Now there are two isozymes. Okay, when, when we say isozyme, there are enzymes that have the same function, but there is a variation. Okay, so here, it's tissue-specific isozyme. So the hexokinase one that we have, we know that it's muscles and other. Okay, the hexokinase four, this is, we call it glucokinase. This is the one present in the liver. Okay, so sana you know how to look at the graph like this okay just by looking at it you can see the km of hexokinase is very small and so very small amount lang ng glucose ano na siya agad um, half, half maximum velocity na siya agad whereas yung um, glucokinase it's not that sensitive to the substrate you need higher amount of the substrate para mag work out. okay so why is that um in terms of tissue distribution most tissues use hexokinase 
again, liver and pancreas lang uses glucokinase kasi it's more of regulatory. Pag tumaas lang yun ng sobra yung glucose, okay, that's the time lang na they will phosphorylate it kasi meron silang regulations inside. And, and then, they will regulate the entire glucose levels ng buong body. Okay, again, for hexokinase, KM is low, 0.05 millimolars lang ng glucose yung kailangan niya, half maximum velocity niya. For um, glucokinase, you need, can you see that? That's 10 millimolars. Okay, so we see very large difference. And the hexokinase is inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. Okay, so yung product mo, i-inhibit niya yung enzyme niya. Okay, so that hindi ka mag-over-accumulate ng product. Okay, so that's the regular, regulatory for hexokinase. For glucokinase, that's not the case. Okay. And then for glucokinase, it's actually inducible. Okay, controlled ka by insulin. Clinical significance. Okay, pag may deficiency ka ng hexokinase, you will have hemolytic anemia. If you have problem with glucokinase, then yun sa kaya gabi. So, less yung activity rest, less yung regulation. So, in essence, magulo yung regulation niya. Okay? And then, biological significance. So, this is your um, hexokinase. So, it's actually an induced fit model. Okay, again, it's irreversible. And once the substrate is inside the active site, it changes its configuration. So, parang iniipat niyo yung molecule para mangyari yung phosphorylation. And I think from Bahamon, you already discussed like what's happening when the enzyme changes configuration. Okay. All right, for the second step, this is isomerization. Isomerization. Okay, so the enzyme is phosphohexose isomerase. So you see, if you know the molecules and what transformations are happening, you will get to memorize the enzymes easily. Like, you have your glucose 6-phosphate, and then you need to convert it to fructose 6-phosphate. So, ano kailangan ba? You need an isomerase. Right? So, ayan yung convert lang from aldose okay, into ketose. Okay. Again, yung purpose nun, why? Okay, so if I may ask you, why is that yung step 1 sa 6-position sa position, position siya nag-add ng phosphate and not on the first position? It's because you cannot add phosphate group on your, you cannot phosphorylate your carbonyl. Okay? Kaya siya nandito sa 6 position. Now, if I want to make a molecule na yung kabila ang ends niya merong phosphate, then I need to convert yung carbon 1 ko into um, hydroxyl group. Okay? That's why we converted it to fructose 6-phosphate. Okay? Now, once you have the fructose 6-phosphate, or bisphosphate rather, Okay, so others, so they will just ask you, what well, need diphosphate? Um, I don't know. Okay, so again, for this fourth step, you will now, okay, cut this molecule into two. The enzyme is your aldolase, okay? So first, second, and third carbon, that is the carbon na nagpaproduce ng dihydroxyacetone, yung may keto group. And then the four, five, and six carbons yung give ng glycylaldehyde free phosphate. And this mole this reaction, even if nag split ka into two molecules, the free energy is actually positive. Okay. All right. So step five again, the basa natin, um, only glycylaldehyde free phosphate can enter the succeeding steps of glycolysis, and so. Or in this time, carbon small, you have to convert the hydroxyacetone phosphate into glyceraldehyde phosphate. Again, that's from ketones. Okay, so you can see ketone to aldehyde. So again, another enzyme, isomerase lump. Okay, and because you have three carbons, so that's triose phosphate isomerase. So that's very easy to remember. Okay, now to keep track of the carbons, okay, especially for labeling reasons, um, radio labeling, okay, or if ever you ask. Okay, so for fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, Again, no, expected na you know how to number your carbons. Um, carbons 1 to 3, that is the one that will produce your dihydroxyacetone. And then 4 to 6, that will give you your glyceraldehyde free phosphate. Okay? Alright, so for the second phase, the payoff phase, you have two glyceraldehyde free phosphates already. Okay? So the 
Step six is just an oxidation reaction. Okay. And here, you can see na ang mapaproduce natin is 1,3-base phosphoglycerate. So that means mag-add ka na naman ng panibagong phosphate. Okay. So, saan galing yung phosphate? Eh, wala na tayong investment phase. Sabi natin, this is payoff phase already. So, the phosphate is actually an inorga inorganic phosphate. It's not coming from ATP. Kaya hindi na siya investment. Okay? So, this is smart, no? Kumuha ka ng phosphate from uh, pre-existing inorganic phosphate. And then, sa succeeding reactions, maging ATP siya. Okay? So, that's brilliant. Okay? And at the same time, because... Um, this is oxidation. Laging tatandaan na, if you have oxidation, then something has to be reduced in the process. Okay? So, the whole enzyme here, so the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, kasi yung substrate mo. And then, sabi natin, it's oxidation process. Okay? So, meron kang um, production na couple doon. Ang nare-reduce mo is the NAD+. Okay? Nare-reduce mo siya into NADH. Okay? Um, so, again, it gets the electrons, it stores it. Now, the NADH now is an uh, electron storage or an energy storage in that sense. So, later, you can get energy also from your NADH. And you know that already, okay, from your previous M. Okay, so remember, you know, if you have oxidation, ano yung nangyayari? Siyempre, meron ka laging reduction. You cannot just oxidize. Oh, Walang nare-reduce, okay? Um, step 7 is your substrate level phosphorylation. So, ito na yung first na payoff stage or reaction. You get ATP from this already. Okay? So, ano yung requirement mo for you to get ATP? Eh, coming from step 6, you have one ribis phosphoglycerate. Of course, you need your ADP. Kasi doon kakabat yung phosphate mo for you to get your ATP. Alright? And another cofactor here is your magnesium. Okay? It just stabilizes yung Meniere's love na enzyme. What's the enzyme? Phosphoglycerate kinase. Okay? But kinase, it's sort of um, moving the phosphate group okay, or other groups okay, from one molecule to another. So in this case, it moves your phosphate group from 1,3-phase phosphoglycerate to ADP. Okay? So the products would be 3-phosphoglycerate kasi ni-remove mo yung phosphate group on the first carbon and you have your ADP. Okay? Step 8 naman, it's a shift of phosphoryl group, okay? So, di ba, we took off already the phosphate on the carbon 1, so we ended up with 3-phosphoglycerate. Now, ililipat yung phosphate na yun, okay, in essence, sa position 2, okay? So, para rin siyang isomerase, but in this case, the name is phosphoglycerate mutase, okay? And cofactor mo again is magnesium. And then I said kanina during the intro part that this is not actually the same phosphate na nandun sa third position. Okay, why? Because this is what's happening inside the enzyme. Okay, so inside your phosphoglycerate metase, you have a pre-existing phosphate group attached to the histidine amino acid. Okay, and then once your 3-phosphoglycerate enters, okay, kakabat yung phosphate from the enzyme to the second position, okay? And then it will also remove the um, phosphate from the third position. And then, yun na yung kakabit na sa histidine. So as you can see, so let's repeat, you have here from the enzyme, this is from your molecule, okay? Kakabit yung sa enzyme on the second position, right? And then, bago mag-end yung reaction, this phosphate group, siya naman yung lilipat dun sa enzyme. Okay? So, in essence, yung na-produce mo na 2-phosphoglycerate contains a different phosphate group. Okay? From the substrate that entered. Okay? So, that's how um, enzyme helps okay, reactions to happen. Alright? So, I hope you get it. Alright. Now, we're almost done. Step 9, this is dehydration reaction. So, you will not be able to appreciate this dehydration reaction if you don't write your reactions, right? So, from 2-phosphoglycerate, again, this phosphate comes from the enzyme. Okay, nag-swap sila. You need your enzyme here in lace and then dehydration ng carbons 2 and 3 to produce your phosphoenol pyruvate. So, this is preparation for the final stage. Okay, so final step is a, another substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, so if you remember, 
step 7 is the first substrate level of phosphorylation or it's the part where you get your first ATP. Now step 10, this is the second part. Now you get your second payoff. Okay, or yung kinita mo na ATP. Okay, again, you need to remember that we have two phosphoenyl pyruvate. Okay, and for you to get ADP, you need your ADP. Okay, so you just get this one, move it here. Okay, because you're gonna move it, you need an enzyme named kinase. In this case, it's pyruvate kinase. And cofactors are both magnesium and potassium. Okay, so byproduct would be um, pyruvate and your ADP. Right? And as you can see, this is very, um, this is a um, spontaneous reaction. Why? Because you get the first ATP. Right? Right. So, to summarize the glycolytic pathway, so this is composed of whether you think that it's two phase, it's energy investment and energy harvest, or in three stages that's energy investment. Uh, the cleavage part okay, so this is the energy investment the cleavage part and then the payoff phase okay so again appreciate what's happening within the molecules that will facilitate the succeeding steps and then any more cofactors that you would get from it okay and the mga regulated steps okay right also um, what are the enzymes that are used here Okay, so overall, for this um, pathway, we get to produce two NADH, okay, because we have two, um, so two NA, so let's go, DH. And then you get to produce two, uh, four ATPs, but then because you invested two ATPs dun sa start, then you deduct it. So, ang magiging total mo na lang would be 2 net ATPs. Okay? Alright. So, that's all for glycolysis. Thank you for listening. If you have comments, you can comment below. Or you can raise it during the scheduled consultation. So, wait na lang for the announcement. Again, stay safe. You can cry, but you don't quit.